It was mid-October. My girlfriend and I had not decorated our apartment yet for Halloween, and we decided to head into town to buy decorations. We always believed in buying locally. We didn't support larger corporations. All their stuff was crap. Buying locally is where you find the gems. When my girlfriend and I drove into town and stopped at a place called Madame Raven's Shop, it had everything. Pumpkins, candles, homemade decorations, cobwebs, you name it. It was a tiny shop right on the edge of a massive forest. We had shopped here last October and knew Madame Raven had the best Halloween decorations around. We walked into the cozy shop. Madame Raven greeted us and told us that if we needed any help, just to ask. My girlfriend headed towards the candle aisle and I browsed a bit. That's when I saw a sign saying pumpkins out back. I told my girlfriend that I'd be outside looking at the pumpkins and followed the sign through the back door. There was a large clearing that was littered with pumpkins. They were all shapes and sizes, some as tiny as my fist to as large as truck tires. I studied them all, trying to find a good one to bring home and carve. When I heard twigs being stepped on, I looked up into the forest. It was dark and full of shadows. Maybe it was an animal or something, I thought. I went back to finding a good pumpkin when I heard a laugh. Not a child's laugh, but a laugh of someone unhinged. I was a little nervous. Was someone watching me? I took a step closer to the forest, and that's when I saw her. About 10 yards in, crouching behind a tree, was Madame Raven. Her eyes were in the back of her head. She was laughing like a maniac. She pointed her finger at me, beckoning me to come into the forest. I turned and went back inside. I grabbed my girlfriend and told her that we're leaving. Her arms were full of decorations, and she hadn't paid for them yet, she pleaded. I told her to forget about it and to just listen to me. We got into my car and we drove off. I explained what happened with Madame Raven in the back. My girlfriend's jaw dropped. We decided to get our Halloween decorations elsewhere, and we don't plan on ever returning. Every October, my sister and I had a pumpkin carving competition, and this fall was no different. Our mom picked us up two large pumpkins after her work shift. My sister and I took them into the kitchen and started to carve. She carved an angry face with sharp teeth, while I carved Harry Potter with the lightning bolt scar. My mom and dad said that we were both winners, but I knew deep down that mine was the better pumpkin. After we finished, we put candles into them and we put them on our front steps for the neighborhood to see. My sister and I stood in admiration at our pumpkins. We were standing at the edge of our driveway when I heard leaves being stepped on. I turned around and saw a man in all black standing across the street, staring at us. When I saw him, he took off. I grabbed my sister's hand and ran back inside. I told my mom and dad what happened. My dad went outside to investigate. When he came back inside about five minutes later, he said that he did not see anything. He told me not to worry, and he made sure the doors and the windows were locked. The rest of the night was normal, and we went to bed. Later that night, around 2 a.m., I woke up to a noise in my room. I opened my sleepy eyes and saw my Harry Potter pumpkin at the foot of my bed. I was confused. Then I saw a note underneath of it. I opened it up and read it. Your pumpkin is better than your sister's. I started to freak out. I sprinted to my parents' room and showed them the note and the pumpkin. My dad rushed into his closet and pulled out his gun. He woke up my sister and told everyone to stay in his room while he went downstairs to check everything out. About 10 minutes later, he said that everything was clear and that we could come downstairs. Our back door was damaged, the window was shattered. On the front porch, my sister's pumpkin was smashed. We called the police. They searched for prints and evidence, but they found nothing. There wasn't much they could do other than inform us to install a security system. To this day, we have no idea who broke into our house and left the note. But every October, I'd be lying to you if I didn't tell you that I look outside my bedroom window, waiting for them to return. It was a chilly October night. My friend Alexandria and I were both babysitting for our neighbor's children, the Doyles. 
Their parents were out for a dinner party with their company and wouldn't be home till late. This was fine for Alexandria and I. 31 days of Halloween was on and we had made hot apple cider for us and the kids to enjoy. It was a typical fall night until the doorbell rang. I got up, went to the door and opened it. No one was there. I looked out into the dark night to see if I could spot any kids playing Ding Dong Ditch, but the street was empty. I'm a little concerned, I shut the door and went back into the living room. Five minutes passed and the doorbell rang again. I hustled to the door, hoping to catch the pranksters red-handed this time. I opened the door again. No one was there. But this time, under the welcome mat, there was a note stuffed under it. I nervously picked up the note and read it. You'll have to be quicker than that, the note said. How about you check upstairs? I turned around and saw a shadow disappear on the landing upstairs. My heart froze. No one was upstairs. Everyone was in the living room. I sprinted into the living room and dragged the kids and Alexandria out of the house. I showed her the note and told her that I saw someone upstairs. We went to the next door neighbors, explained the situation and called the police. When they finished the investigation, they informed us that they found duct tape, rope and a steak knife in an upstairs bedroom. Also, one of the windows was forced open and damaged. The police told us that we were lucky nothing happened to us. They have no idea how long the intruder was in the house for. That piece of information still haunts me. The Doyles came home early and they ended up staying with family that night who lived about 20 minutes away. Alexandria and I went back to my house, but we never went to sleep. This all happened about 5 years ago, but still, on chilly fall nights, I always wonder what if we didn't leave the house when we did? What if, whoever was in the house, actually did what they planned on doing? I'm just thankful to God that I'm still alive.